previously on Like Tesla. So it's been restored fully on the outside to look as if it's just a regular restored classic car. Inside, it's got a Nissan Leaf drivetrain, Nissan Leaf battery pack. I'd like for you to uh, come out of the shop. We're actually building a Ford F-450 dually, and we took a Tesla drive unit, separated the inverter from the motor. It's not no creep. All right, go ahead. Whatever the, anything fathomable that the customer wants, inside the bounds of the law, we'll do it. Big shout out to Climate Exchange for supporting this channel. They're raffling off a fully optioned Tesla of your choice and they'll even pay the taxes for you. One raffle ticket gets you three chances to win a Tesla or cash and it helps out a great cause for this nonprofit. For more info, check out carbonraffle.org and good luck. We met Greg and his partner Bill at Atlanta's Drive Electric Week and soon learned what they had to tell us had to be shared with more people. The battery box is all wired up. All the BMS chips have been installed. Uh, the pigtail which links all the BMS uh, boards together. Greg and Bill operate Sealock, an EV conversion shop in the most unsuspecting of places. In rural North Georgia in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. Here, you'll find some of the most unique EV conversion projects this side of the Rockies. When we're done, this should look like a regular Ford pickup. There shouldn't be anything outside of this but the badging. Plus, it's a Tesla, too. It's not just the F450. So right now, we're going to go take a look at This is a Ford F450 Dually, and it has a Tesla inside it. No, is it a Tesla Model S that Model you use? And what, what size battery? Can you tell us a little bit about that Tesla? Uh, we're going to run a 90 kilowatt battery. Uh, we're going to run an EV controls controller, which basically overrides the Tesla immobilizer so that you can operate the truck normally. And we're going to run a, uh, a special transfer case that mates up to the motor. That was one of the uh, more difficult challenges is to find an adapter plate that can mate a Tesla truck to a transfer case that can handle the instant torque that Tesla puts out. Because most anything made for ice is made to ramp up your RPMs or to ramp up your uh, torque. Uh -huh. This is like an instant pop. So you have to have something high performance and be able to pull a four or 5,000 pound trailer, a couple hundred miles. The trailer that we design actually will charge the truck. So when you get to where you're going, you don't need to find a, a, a charging station. You can actually charge the truck. You can pull a thing in the middle of the desert, charge the truck and keep going. The trailer is going to have a, uh, it's got a 10 kilowatt inverter on it. And this truck has two five kilowatt onboard chargers, which are from a Model S. So this is the onboard charging container unit. It's going to be mounted with this side up. So uh, these are actually going to hang. They're going to be under the bed of the truck to help keep them cool, added shade. Those are the ports for the uh, water jackets. That's what's going to flow the coolant through there. With two five kilowatt chargers, you're probably talking about maybe four hours. So you can get to where you're going, camp out, hang out for a few hours, charge your truck and keep going. While your truck is driving, the trailer can actually be recharging from the solar energy. And that's okay. our goal. So the trailer can charge itself in essence, and then the trailer can also charge the truck. That's amazing. Now, would it be able to use the Tesla supercharging network? No because yeah. proprietary reasons and safety reasons. You know, a Tesla designed their vehicle so that the only way you can use a supercharger network is if it is basically a proper OEM Tesla equipment. This is not OEM Tesla equipment anymore, so therefore there's a lot of modifications that wouldn't be, uh, how can I say, safe to use at a supercharging network because you're okay. shutting so many volts back and so many amps back in that battery, it, you have to kind of stay with, below a threshold that's dangerous. Okay. So that's, it's for, and it's for good reasons. You, know, you can't just have anyone going to try and use a supercharger. You know, right. It, it's just, that's, that is Tesla proprietary information. What about um, other chargers? Can you still use different kinds yes. of chargers? Yes, you can use J1772. You can use your level two chargers out in, in public areas. So the project we're working on is actually retrofitting a Tesla motor to the uh, transfer case. All kinds of secrets here. Yes, yes. <laughs> This is the think tank here. So this here is a Tesla motor. This is a Model S motor. Tesla's come with their own differentials. 
And uh, the way they're designed is, their, their drive units are designed to sit transversely in the rear axle to power their cars. The front wheel drive or rear drive. All that torque. I <laughs> know. Nice and quiet. I can't believe that kind of power. It's just, it's deceptive because it's so quiet. But they're made to sit sideways. With that truck and with most heavy duty trucks, uh, it'll be hard to, almost makes it difficult to set something like this sideways because you need so much rain on the rear and the way the suspension is set up, that heavy duty suspension. So for modification purposes or for conversion purposes, we had to make this motor so that it could sit and spin in line with the drive shaft. So what we had to do was we had to take all of this out, which is what we did on this one, and we had to go right down to the spline of the motor, which is this right here. This mm -hmm. is the actual motor that's spinning. Mm -hmm. So we had to have a special spline designed and cut, which fits over top of this, just like such. And then that then goes and slides inside of the transfer case. And when this spins, as you see, the gear ratio is way, way slower than what this here will spin. This is a special transfer case. So what this will do is this will end up giving us about a 10 to 1 gear ratio. Tesla uses 9.55 to 1 gear ratio, which gives you your speed. Because we're running bigger tires, we want to go about 10 to 1. I'm assuming that you started out with a full Model S and then a full um, F450 Dually. Yes. And then what do you do with the parts you don't use? Well, we get our parts from a supplier. His name is Jason Hughes from 057 Technologies. Great guy. He's one of the best programs I've ever known. Uh, and what we do is we get our motors, we get our controllers. Some controllers we have gotten from EV West, and you can use it with a digital platform, or you can use it with an analog platform. So if you want to have a switch or an old fashioned screw, you know, change your amount of regen, you can do that, or you can put it on a digital screen and watch it. Jason creates a, a, an open source enough platform to where you can kind of modify it and do what you want. So that's why we like to do it with him. So were you inspired at all by, um, I have to ask this, by Rich True Builds? A little bit, yes. I have to pay homage to them. Uh, it's nice to see someone tackle what, what people consider the uh, the uncharted territory, and he did it, and uh, and he's pretty good at what he does. Uh, one of my uh, biggest idols, to so to speak, would would have to be Elon Musk. I mean, he did what the world said couldn't be done. He made uh, an electric vehicle outperform an ice vehicle, hands down, and then he made it sexy, like. Who does that? Yeah. Right. And, uh, and the thing about it is, is he actually, his company listens to the customer feedback. We do plan to get into the heavy duty truck electric market. That's what we want to do. Uh, we don't want to tackle semis. We don't want to tackle regular pickups. We yeah. want to be in the heavy duty area uh, because we have a formula that we know works. And uh, that's what we, we feel that is, it'd be a good niche for us to fall yeah. into. Well, we haven't seen the actual Tesla truck, so this is probably as close to the Tesla pickup truck as we will get in the next few months, right? Until that big unveil, which hopefully will happen soon. Yeah. Um, what are kind of the biggest challenges for a project like this? Uh, the biggest challenge right now, first of all, is weight and balance, battery location, heating and cooling. That is the biggest thing. Making sure this thing is cool enough, making sure it's balanced enough because uh, we designed a battery box that weighs 100 pounds less than the motor. So inside this battery box are 16 Tesla modules. The battery box is all wired up. All the BMS chips have been installed. Uh, the pigtail, which links all the BMS uh, boards together and, and uh, all of the wiring, uh, which is in series, is all done. So now what we're gonna do is, you, if you see right here, you'll see it's zero. We're gonna turn this gigabyte switch on and this is gonna let us know if uh, we're at where we're supposed to be, so. So we're at 380 volts. You divide that by 16, it's about 23.75. So each of these carry about 23.70 to 23.75 voltage. So uh, it's a success. Of course, your, your battery management chips. And there's also a heating and cooling system. So these two right here build up pressure, but they disperse. 16 inlet and 16 outlet hoses that go in cooling the uh, Tesla water jackets inside of the battery box. And then we have a pump, we have a Tesla heater, we have a Tesla three-way valve, which changes from either hot to cold, whichever one you're gonna use. 
we have two radiators which are sitting right there which are going to basically sit in front and cool and heat this box according to the optimal operating temperature. All of this weighs right around the exact amount of the motor. So what that means is with the suspension and the handling, when you take this out, this truck raises up mm -hmm. and then it becomes tail end heavy and you have that little swirly feeling. When you drop this in, then it sits in just like a motor would and we actually have motor mounts so that this can bolt in with seven bolts. And it sits and rests just like a motor would and it handles like a motor that would. That is fascinating. So that's something that I guess you have to think about a lot is normally the Tesla, the batteries are all on the bottom of the car and it kind of weighs it down where with this because you're retrofitting it you really need the weight to be the same as the pieces that you're taking exactly, out exactly exactly the test was designed the tesla was designed to have the batteries at the bottom of the car to have a low handling no center of gravity which is great which is one of the best handling and you know best accelerating cars out there this however was designed for torque pulling climbing off-road capabilities so what we had to do was we had to make sure that there was a, about 60 percent of the weight on the front 40% on the rear, just like you would a regular vehicle, and also have to compensate for when you're pulling or towing. So that's why we went with the design that we went with. So will you still have the like regen braking and yes. all that with this? You'll have regener regenerative braking, you'll have uh, the quiet ride just like you want to with an electric car. You'll have your 12 volt system, which just runs in, and this here will com control the computer, which, which is the original computer for the truck, which is for your ABS system and your normal brakes. So what is the maintenance like for a vehicle like this? None. Just like a regular electric car, rotating like tires, it. really not much. Rotate tires, you don't use your brakes as much because of regenerative braking. Yeah. Uh, you don't have oil or transmission fluid, you don't have anything. Uh, yeah. You may have to put some washer fluid in. <laughs> That's washer about fluid, it. air filters. Yeah, cabin filters. Yeah, the cabin air filter. Yeah, your cabin filter. Uh, but that's about it. This will be about as low maintenance as a Tesla. That's so, uh, amazing. Amazing. So how long, well obviously you're kind of in the middle of the project right now. Mm -hmm. How long do you expect this to take? Six more months because after we make it go, then you can make it show. So we're working on making it go now. And then after that, you got to put it together. We got to bring it back to its state. When we're done, this should look like a regular Ford pickup. There shouldn't be anything outside of this but the badging. That's the only way you would know that this is electric, of course, obviously not hearing it. But that's our goal then is to take it back to its original state and make it look like a regular 2000 Ford F450, just like we did with the Mercedes. So cool. So what is the owner planning on using this for? Is it just for everyday use or is it something special? Um, Pretty much everyday use, just driving around. You know, uh, he was just uh, tired of dumping a bunch of carbon in the air, and he wanted to drive his truck, but he didn't want to have to drive it at the cost of the planet. Mm -hmm. So he said, you know, if he can, he'll do what he can to do his part. And he's all about electric vehicles. He he's a Tesla driver himself. He's got a nice Model X, and uh, he likes his old pickup. So that's why we uh, we're converting it for him. That's amazing. That's amazing. And. Are you able to say like what the cost of something like this would be? Like if somebody wanted uh, to come here, like a range? Uh, well, awesome. the range is not cheap. <laughs> it is not cheap uh, because of engineering. And I'll be honest with you, um, I, I have to thank him. We have to thank him a lot because he kind of let us experiment with this a little bit. There was a, there was a few uh, trial and errors in here that, that he was willing to fork over because he wanted this done right and he, under, he knew that this was kind of uh, uncharted territory, what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So his cost is well into 150000 However, because we have these uh, designs that we've stamped and that we are able to put in virtually any heavy-duty truck, the next one would be closer to the 100 hundred thousand maybe right around sub hundred thousand mm -hmm. range if you were to buy an f-450 off the lot you're gonna pay right around a hundred thousand yeah but when you can factor in your cost of ownership over the years with the maintenance and everything else then you're you, you've doubled or tripled what you would pay for this right plus it's a tesla too it's not just the f-450 exactly so yeah. you're, you're getting an f-450 that that it's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's insane. It's amazing. I mean, it kind of blows my mind when I think about it, uh, um, it's, how you're able to do this. It's a, it's a challenge. It, it is a challenge. Are we able to take a peek inside and kind of see yeah, what's going really on? Yeah, it's nothing to do to really see inside yet. This particular client wanted to design where it was simple as possible. He wanted this dashboard replaced, which we are building right now. 
and all that he wants is just a motor controller which i have in the other room i'll show you and he wants some old timey gauges on this side so what we're going to do is we're going to drill holes and we're going to throw some analog gauges throw some shunts to them to where it says voltage amperage and, and a big old speedometer from like maybe the 30s or 40s that's what he wants he okay. wants this thing this is his baby we're building how he so how he, he doesn't want like the tesla screen and because usually with tesla that's where most of your controllers are just yeah well right there well fortunately the uh aftermarket controller that we've that we've uh incorporated kind of lets you kind of play around a little bit with what you want for your controls uh which is what we're putting in it's not as, as open source as uh, jason hughes's but it is pretty open source where we can uh kind of make a few changes and, and personalize it so that's what we're going to do for this one uh i prefer a tesla screen i love tesla screens but <laughs> it, uh, you know he wants this thing to kind of have that uh, really kind of mm -hmm. older fashioned look. So do you think in the future then that you will be making every one of these truck conversions custom or will you have some of them ready to go for customers? Well, some we're gonna have ready to go for customers. That's our goal is to have basically an assembly line and a plant where we just stamp out heavy duty electric trucks. Uh, however, for the customers that do want theirs uh, customized, yes, we will be doing that. We also design a gear shift so that you can drive this truck rear wheel drive front wheel drive or rear wheel drive so you'll be able to drive it front low high rear low high or both low and high so you can drive this truck basically front wheel drive rear wheel drive or all wheel drive so that's uh that's our design wow. we've come up with mm -hmm. that's so cool it'd be a fun car to drive yeah it'll be, it'll be really fun <laughs> and then if there are issues um, obviously, Tesla is not going to service this. No. Um, so no. you guys would be the ones that, that would need to service this vehicle. Yes, we're going to be the ones to service it. And actually, what we're doing is we're putting together a website and that has uh, technical support where we're going to be able to do over-the-air upgrades, over-the-air uh, fixes. You know, in, anything software and uh, anything that goes beyond that. Of course, we just have to fly out or go out to wherever it is. So, but it's, that's. That's what you do when you start. <laughs> so, That's crazy. So what is, what is your background? I'm really curious because this is like not something the average person would, I think, attempt to even tackle. <laughs> well, uh, my background is self-taught. That's it. I'm self-taught. Uh, everything I've learned from a CAN bus to, uh, I don't know, Raspberry Pi, it's all just self-taught. I've just been in a community of people that know this stuff. Uh, from, from high voltage AC to DC to three phase, all of it. It's just something that I've grown up around. And I've surrounded myself with the right people that know a little bit more than me, so mm -hmm. they can teach me. And uh, <clears throat> right now we're assembling a team that can put together a support network so that if we start stamping these trucks out, which we plan to, that we can support whatever they need, either via internet or mm -hmm. you know, text flying out to do what they need to do. And another thing we're trying to do is we're trying to build our parts so that they're modular so that if something happens and it is a part that you could fix yourself or that we could get someone else wherever you are to fix it we could just ship that modular part out you can just replace that unit instead of having to take the whole thing apart right now we are about an hour or so north of Atlanta. hour north of the city in the mountains yeah and it's We're kind of mountains. more of a rural <laughs> area maybe not what you would where you'd expect to find in a conversion shop no um, no no it's it's like that for a reason we do a lot of research and development for other people other companies so uh, they kind of like to keep their things under wraps. So this is a good area to do that in. That's kind of cool because you come out here, you're not expecting this, and then all of a sudden you walk into the shop and you're like, wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. so we had to have a special plate design that not only butts up to this, but also has cooling passages to cool your motor and your inverter. Also cool your transfer case and have an adapter plate to hold both of these together with an watertight seal so that the coolant can go from here to here if need be not lose a drop of coolant and everything runs at the optimal temperature and that's where our challenge was but i think we solved it this is a lot this is a lot of you know critical thinking that involves lots of engineering yeah <laughs> uh, yeah there's there's a lot of numbers uh I, I can't i'll have to be honest with you there's a my partner william sky i wish he could be here he had to be on a, an emergency run but um that guy's got the brain of a calculator. I mean, he can just, uh, he, he just, I don't know how he comes up with it, but he is a, a engineering guru. You know, with his, his mechanical engineering, 
and my electrical engineering we were able to put together some pretty good systems. Well, I definitely feel like we will have to come back at some point and do a follow-up, um, yeah. meet him, see this yes. when it's finished too, yes. and yes. Um, maybe get a chance to drive it if we're able oh, to. Oh, I'd love so to. I'd love that to would be really it. fun. It'll be awesome. Yes, it'll be awesome. Um, this is really cool. What kind of questions do you guys have about this? Let us know in the comments and hopefully you can hop online and maybe answer some of those questions yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. for people. That would be great. Next time on Like Tesla. This is the leaf before the leaf. <laughs> this was it. So this here is the remaining inventory of all the Wegos in the world. Like this is the rest of the parts. Uh, there are no more. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video and feel free to check out some of the over 200 EV and Tesla inspired videos on our channel. And thanks as always for continuing to support us by shopping on our website, liketeslakim.com. Check out some of the fun designs, Elon quotes, and more for men, women, and kids.